well <clears throat> you saw some of the recruits that i've had over the years and i've got a lot to be thankful for and a lot of people to thank both players and coaches i coached with over the years uh, i've been very fortunate very successful but it's new not so much to me as it is to all the people that surrounded me um, several of them are in this room today when i was here uh, my mother i can remember when she before she died she was around she was 103 when she died but around when she was around 100 we won the national championship in anaheim and i decided that i'd phone her and tell her that we won the national championship again so i phoned her because just down the street from the arena was the Crystal Palace, and her strength was her faith. And she always watched that program on TV. So I had attended the service there with some of our players prior to the championship, and I wanted to tell her about it. And she said, you played on Easter Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> Who planned this? <laughs> And that was it. It started from there. <laughs> I just had to hold it up. <laughs> I could never stand straight enough. I could never do the right thing. But, you know. <laughs> so I had sort of a, a dichotomous background with my family. My father was in the First and Second World War and a boxer, British Army boxing champion. And, and I ended up playing all these sports, hockey, soccer, lacrosse, judo, and so on. And my mother just a bored violence. She would not watch us play. Never saw me play any game. She just could not stand the violence of those sports. And just before she died, she said, when are you gonna get a real job? You're not still coaching hockey, are you? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm blessed to have picked the job that I picked because I really believe that I was so fortunate to pick a, an occupation that I truly love in a sport that I, I have a great passion for. I remember at our table over here with, with all my family and friends and so on, uh, whose love I, and, and support I, I truly cherish, I have John Gray, and John was a captain at North Dakota at one time and, and coached or taught school here and he was integral as far as the introduction of hockey at the high school level here. And John and I played on the same line at Orioles <coughs> in Bantam and Midget, and we had a line mate, Fred Miller. And one day, Fred said while we were dressing, I'm gonna be a pilot for Air Canada. And I was like, how does this guy know what he's gonna do? And I was just amazed. I was flabbergasted by what he said. And when I graduated from the University of, uh, of Minnesota, Duluth, I remember what the speaker said, and now your education begins. Well, I was feeling pretty good with that motor board on my head and everything, and this guy's telling me, and now your education begins? What have I been doing for four years? But really, my education in my formative years prepared me as well as anything else in my education. And the opportunity, I lived in the West End. Um, we didn't have much, but you know, when you don't have much, you just make the best of what you have, and we were happy, and we didn't know we didn't have much. And we, we played sports in season. It didn't cost us a cent, and it was a good thing, too, because we had never been able to afford it. We never had a family car or anything like that. But my family was a working family. They were gone from the house at 5 in the morning. They were in bed by 9 o'clock at night. My dad was a, a sergeant major type of guy, and I lived in a barracks for most of my life, basically. <laughs> um, so it was a relief, maybe, to get out of there. But it brought the foundation for the way I thought. And I can remember in elementary school at John M. King, I'd look out the window every day and see this shack keeper, Ms. Charlie Larson, an old guy. He wore full-length dungarines, and he'd come in there every day, and you'd think he was Michelangelo. He wouldn't let you go near that rink. They flooded it on Friday, and uh, they attached the hose to the, to the fire hydrant, and it was flooded on Friday. We had glass-like ice, and the rest of the week, Charlie made ice for us. He chipped out a V in the ice, melted snow into that ice, and it was just like his masterpiece. And I never forgot his work ethic or the work ethic of my parents and the people in our neighborhood. 
And then when I came back to teach in Winnipeg at Churchill High School, I had the good fortune to run into a guy who became uh, one of my very best friends, George Phillips, who's an inductee, or he was inducted a couple of years ago, and uh, very deservingly. He's, he's done more for sport in Manitoba and across Canada than, than most people. He's the guy that started the International Peace Gardens, and uh, it, it became, it started, went from a track camp to an all sports camp. And I had the opportunity to work with him. I had to because my salary was $2,900 at Churchill the first year I was there. And it rose to about $300 more than that three years later. And I was a caretaker at an apartment block, so I knew I had to get out of here. And I wanted to coach hockey. I learned that I didn't want to set up experiments for the rest of my life and grade papers over Christmas and Easter. So of all the sports I was able to coach, and play here and gain a background as a player. When I think of guys like Charlie Caithness, who was the general manager of Scottish, I always wanted to play for Scottish. And they were like my, my Barcelona. And then in, in lacrosse and hockey, we always had role models. We didn't have clinics like they have today in respect of sports. We mimicked and we learned from the guy of a little older than us and we learned how to play that way, and we played hockey every day outside, which I th still think you have to do, because you have to make that sacrifice, even though they got a, this abundance of rinks. They had the amphitheater and the Olympic rink when I was here. And I had my nose against that plexiglass for every major sport in the city, whenever it happened from the Winnipeg, or from the Mandak League in baseball to, the, to all the junior teams and so on. And I had some great coaches along the way. And I learned as much from the players that I coached as they learned from me, in spite of what all those things said up there. And one of my, th my, my first recruits here, uh, it was gonna be Brian Engblom, but Brian decided that, his, that he couldn't afford to go to Dartmouth where I was coaching, is David Hill. And, and, and the other guy was Vince Orchard, and both of them are lawyers. And I, it, it's, yeah, I, I coach hockey, but I'm an educator, and the great thing is to see these guys come in as young guys and become successful, not only in their sport, have objectives, win national championships and so on, or play to the best of their ability, and then go on and do well in their, in their personal and, and uh, private lives and in their business lives, like David as a lawyer here. David was one of the best golfers in Winnipeg, and my brother-in-law says that he's, he's, uh, um, he's his putting has gone a little bit downhill, but I believe his son just graduated in, as a forensic uh, psychiatrist, so he's got somebody to handle that. <laughs> the other guy I want to talk about here briefly is Don Baisley. And Don Baisley is one of the real reasons I'm here tonight, along with, uh, um, well, Don, Don was a student at Churchill High School, and he, he was influenced by, by George Phillips. He thought he was gonna be the athlete of the year as a half miler, and George put him in his place because of a few things that happened. And Don and I were developing a lacrosse league in, in Winnipeg. We were selecting teams in the, in the uh, Cambridge Hotel. And Don looked at my list and he said, you know, my team is much stronger than yours. I think you should take some of my players. And I never forgot that. And so whenever I had a player who was worthy of going on and playing pro hockey, I always said, have a cup of coffee with Don Baisley. His honesty and integrity are beyond reproach. So that's the kind of guy that we have around this place and uh, I, I admire him greatly and he personifies courage and, and strength right now in his life and I wish him the best of luck. Thank you very much, I appreciate this so much and I congratulate all the athletes. <laughs>